Photo X 1.5 TFX and welcome back to another video. Well, uh, how to start this one off? Well, this is a little bit what it's going to be about. Photography to recompose and recharge yourself from work. Being flashy without flashing others. Still imagery and substitute for B-roll. Improvised rotating camera B-roll. I sit in a chair. Rotating lenses. Lenses that extend. Sped up footage in order to save time. And even more still images in substitute for B-roll. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the thing is, after the entirety of 2020 that we all want to be well and done with and behind us, uh, there is always the sense of, but depending on what you work with and so on, how it has affected you, and I know that I'm far from being alone in this one, but sometimes you just need to take a mental break in order to just be able to continue in the long run, so you have to see the big picture. Uh, pun intended. But anyway, well, I thought that I needed to get away and I just did that to clear up up here and uh, try to get back to some form of uh, creativity in order to recharge mentally. So I went on a little bit of a trip to self-care trip, should I say, and this is what I brought in order to just do photography just for the sake of it. So yeah, all in all, what camera did I bring? Well, the D700, a, a camera that I've talked many times, talked about many times before, and it's a 12 megapixel, it's a 12 megapixel full frame camera, and that uh, it has no video functionality, and uh, it is brilliant for what it is. So if you are out there in the market for a, maybe you're the beginner that wants to get into digital photography in 2021, I would really recommend this one because they have come down very nice in price. And if you can get a decent or a refurbished example on eBay or any other internet auction site, I paid about $500, 5,000 Swedish for this one. So, or a little bit less than that. Uh, it is brilliant for the money uh, and uh, I mean the equivalent in today's market would be several times even yeah I wouldn't dare to guess how much it would be today but anyway it's something that has come down in price and I would really recommend if you are into getting a DSLR or getting into photography in 2021. In the lineup of lenses, I managed to get a little bit of, so I, have, so I had a plethora of things to do, a little bit creative and uh, some other things as well. But we begin here with the Sigma AF Super Wide. This is a 24mm f2.8 lens, prime lens, uh, that has a maximum aperture of uh, 2.8. And uh, what is the closest focusing now again on it? Well, it's uh, 18 centimeters or a little bit uh, below 0.6 feet. So yeah, really close. You have the real ability to get a close up with this one, but uh, the, ma uh, the maximum uh, is uh, one to four times magnification. So not a true one to one macro, but that's not the point of it either. This is one of those that you can get a very close up of your subject and still have the background uh, in the uh, composition. So really good for close ups and wide angle, happy medium there. Then probably what has become one of my favorite macro lenses, the Micro Nikkor 60mm AFD. It's a 2.8 uh, as well and uh, 60 millimeters. I mean, if you will, instead of getting, I would almost say that instead of getting a 50 millimeter for your Nikon system, I would basically recommend this one instead, actually, because you have, it's really great for both, you know, it's almost, it's almost comparable to a 50 millimeter, even though it's 60, but the range of things you can do with this little lens I would really recommend it. It's brilliant. 
And then when I just went out and wanted to do some landscapes and so on, just to, you know, capture a bigger scene and so on, this is probably, this is probably one me over. This is the, uh, Ni uh, the Nikon FD Nikkor 20-35 2.8D lens. I mean, 20-35 to 35 might not be the widest of uh, zoom ranges, but the quality of the images that this one produces, I couldn't be happier. It's a screwdrive lens, so you need a, a camera with a, a camera body with a screwdriver autofocus system, but for what it is, it is an older lens, but the quality of it is second to none. Then, if you're just going to go out and do general purpose or general type of photography, this one is also a unsurpassed lens, really. For the price and the quality for the price, it's the AF Nikkor 35 to 70 millimeter, also a 2.8D version. It's a push-pull zoom lens, and it also at 35 millimeter, it has a little bit of a close-up. I wouldn't say macro, but a close-up setting as well. Just push this silver button and twist the color here and you get a little bit of a close-up as well on this one. So, brilliant lens. It's not that expensive, the quality is great, and uh, yeah, a lot of professionals in the 90s still use this one, and I think some still use it today, because really great lens. And probably the most modern lens that I took with me, it's the AFS Nikkor 70 to 300 millimeter, 45 to 56. Uh, when you're not going to do a specific photography, but just going to do general on a trip and so on, uh, I do also own the 80 to 200 millimeter 2.8. But this one, if you're going to do some spare the moment wildlife photography or anything like that, this one is unsurpassed. It has VR. It is, you know, if you put this on a APS-C or a DX camera, it becomes a 450 equivalent with the crop factor. So, really recommended lens, this one. If you're gonna get one lens for, a, for FX or DX in order to do, you know, a little bit of beginner's wildlife or nature photography when you need a one lens that would do all this tele work you need, this is the one to get, the VR version. And of course also, the one downside with the D700 is that it is uh, not a high ISO capable camera. I mean, I use this maximum at ISO 200 in order to get what I want. So that means indoors, in low light situations, now in January 2021, we're still in the period of time, at least here in Sweden, when we have fairly short days and darkness sets in fairly quickly. So either outdoor or indoor, you need basically a flash. And even though it has a built-in pop-up flash that can be used in a commander mode, I brought with me also the Nikon SB900 with the diffuser. That's basically the main way I use it uh, with the diffuser or with the, lens, uh, with the flash just as is. I chose this one because I wanted to be able to do spotlighting and so on. Normally I would get something like the SB800, but I thought that I would get take the SB900 with me in order to, you know, do some more directed light and some more creative style photography. So this flash was a brilliant, tool to have. So either I could use it with the camera's built-in flash to trigger the SP900, and I but I also brought with me the, let's see, you know, I can never remember these names, SC29, the coil, coiled uh, flash cord. It's full TTL, it has a built-in autofocus light, or autofocus assist light that, uh, you know, this is a 
really great piece of gear to have if you're doing even though if you're using the built-in pop-up flash this doesn't help anything with autofocus so if you need to help the camera with the autofocus this is the tool to use in my opinion because you still have an off-camera flash that you can direct light as you choose but also you have the built-in autofocus assist light so in a low light condition this is a very handy tool to have indeed. I didn't bring any action camera or anything because this was just relaxing uh, to take any video so no b-roll for this one unfortunately but um, all in all I thought that this would give me a little bit of the opportunity to just clear my head and take a mental break from, you know, everything. So all in all I think that this is all for me for now and as always, <clears throat> this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X1.5 FX and I'd like to see you guys in the next video and as always please like share comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one take care from now on bye